grow or like be anything more than what it is right it's just like twitter is the armpit of the internet and it will always be the armpit of the internet and like nobody's gonna like all of a sudden be convinced you right. know and like the next generation of people it's not like they're really going to be interested in twitter unless they're interested in you know finding the armpit of the internet piling on twitter and being like this isn't a platform yeah it's like a very i don't know faux intellectual like journalist thought leader you know it's it's really it's interesting the type of people that use twitter and try to be you know good at it but yeah i don't know you gotta it's be kind of original yeah um, it's also frustrating to me because people will make like i was looking at one guy's tweet this morning and it was like 18 different tweets all kind of in a row you know it's like part one of 18 part two of 18 it's like whoa fuck that but yeah write a blog post or some shit exactly you know it's like this is just not a platform for saying stuff yeah it's yeah it's more for just talking shit but yeah. anyway everybody thanks for coming and uh listening to our renting uh, rambling. <laughs> yeah it's not really like a podcast no. i don't want it to be a podcast you know because like i don't like podcasts and the world Whatever. doesn't need another podcast, right? That doesn't mean we're not podcast in the world. I know it's true. Everyone like has a video, podcast, a video streaming. But anyway, our title today is "Scientists Are Destroying Science." Can you hear us? I can't hear you because you're not speaking. Can I? Uh, see we you we can read I... your comment though. Yeah, we do see it. <laughs> can is you that... hear us? <laughs> can you hear us? I mean, I imagine you can. I don't know. If you can't hear us, sorry, tough luck. I saw some people last time were commenting on how they were confused about the, the comments. comments, you know, just because like, yeah. consolidating comments from a lot of different social medias. and. Yeah, like, so we use this website called Restream, which allows you to stream to multiple websites at the same time. And so, uh, like we're streaming to like all of our individual YouTubes and Facebooks and other stuffs. So like you won't get to see all of the chat. We can put the chat on the screen, but then it like makes everything super small. Instead, we usually highlight um, individual comments that people make. So uh, uh, the, uh, you know, live stream isn't bombarded with sometimes annoying chat messages yeah and sometimes not any not. of you are annoying it's the other people yeah yeah it's talking to the other guy yeah. <laughs> what a headline, what a headline. Yeah, yeah so i i published an article this morning on my sub stack um with the same title and i think it's a really interesting um a really interesting premise uh, is just that like science itself is like, it's not the best thing we have at all. You know, nobody's tried to make like the best science. Right. Um, it's definitely, uh, um, it's definitely suboptimal. We're not optimizing for people doing the best science, but it's corrupted of course by human beings. And I think one of the issues is that the institution has been around just for so long that it's become so corrupted that it, you can't change it anymore. The only way to like change science is to tear down the system and create something new. And that is of course, you know, like biohacking. Um, that's kind of the thesis of what I wrote. Uh, and obviously there's, you know, a lot of reasons how scientists are destroying science um and big one is publishing you know i think i think publishing is like the core root problem of all of science like if you remove publishing science would cha have to change so much um because like publishing is the basis for like getting jobs getting grants like proving your worth as a scientist that has no scientific basis <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And so like, that's a terrible me, medium for communication. Yeah. For me, like if publishing is like one of the main root problems of science and just transparency also, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and it's also like, you know, how do you create um, how do you create public trust if all of your work is locked away behind paywalls and, you know, all this sort of stuff. And so all the all the people saying you're a scam artist are saying it for free and easily available and digestible and well put together format. And all the and you trying to say, hey, no, read the paper. I mean, pay pay. Three hundred and fifty-two dollars a year, but read the paper. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. But yeah, no, it's yeah, and so uh, I just wrote something about that. You know that it's like that system is like a, a failing system, I think, um, and there's not much we can do anymore to, you know, make that system better. And like, don't become a scientist, you know? <laughs> Maybe that's do better. Like... do better science. Yeah, yeah. Do better science. Yeah, and I think you know, I said that's something I saw on Twitter the other day. Somebody was asking like, how do you, uh, like, what's the best way? You know, I've got some students who want to contribute to to science communication. What's the best way they can contribute to science communication? Science, um, I hate the term science communication. It's so annoying. It is pretty cringy. Because like, like, wait, like there's no like other like communication, you know, there's not like computer yeah. communication oh, or like any other industry in the world doesn't have like a whole thing dedicated, dedicated to communication, except science, because like people yeah. are too dumb to like yeah. understand it. Yeah. You are not too dumb, so you are the one who's going to help the dumb people That's know something. Much. That's pretty much it's pretty much exactly how it's packaged it's either like it's either like you're either trying not to say well i need to dumb it down for y'all or uh propaganda so you have to say science communication yeah yeah science communication it's uh i just yeah i dislike that term because especially yeah and like the people who usually do it it's not like they're super skilled at communicating or anything usually <laughs> Yeah. It's also like, yeah. you if know. science communication would work, we would live in s such a better world. <laughs> yeah, I think the biggest thing is like, you know, talk to people in places they can actually get it, like make videos about your work instead of publishing that shit in cell and nature. Yeah, right. That's like science communication. Um, it's just like make science available so people can read it. Um, how are publications a problem? Didn't get it. I don't know if it's a serious question or not, or you just don't understand. It might just be that they missed the front part of the video. The scientific publication process in general. <laughs> I mean, okay, so let's just let's start from the beginning. Let's assume nobody understands how scientific publishing works. So generally, in science, you do your experiments, you write up a paper, you format the paper in a way that the journal requests, you submit it to the journal, the journal sends off the paper to reviewers who, who work for free. These are other scientists. These reviewers decide whether the paper should be published or not. The paper is published, then the publishing company charges you usually nowadays somewhere around five thousand dollars but can be upwards of ten thousand dollars to take this paper that you formatted and wrote and literally host it on a website that's it that's the only job they do and they email your paper to the reviewers that's the only job these publication companies do so like 90 percent of papers are behind paywalls that means that you have to pay to access these papers right now, everything is based off of publishing, but publishing also isn't like double blind, right? So if you're a reviewer, you can see who published the paper. So if it's a friend of yours, they're in the same field, you can accept the paper and just be like, that's fine. It's a good paper, right? 
publishing is the basis for everything. It's the basis for grants. It's the basis for faculty jobs. It's the basis for tenure. It's the basis for basically everything in science. But it's so corrupted because, you know, like there's like the, the, the politics and everything that go into publishing, yeah. right? Like if you publish in, you know, a prestigious journal versus a non-prestigious journal, like that matters, not the science. Nobody's sitting there and being like, this science is great. No. And like plenty of Nobel Prize winners, the work that they did wasn't published in prestigious journals, right? So there's not necessarily like an exact correlation between publishing in good journals and good science. So how do you measure good science, I think is the question. Is there a way? And is good science measured by where you publish your papers? Because that seems like a very shitty measure of good science, right? Yeah, it's just an appeal to authority at that point. And it's a system that feeds into itself, right? Like if you get a job at Harvard, then you get grants, then you publish papers, you have money to compete. So you publish papers in journals that are more fancy because you can just do more work, right? You can use more fancy equipment. And so those papers are considered, you know, cutting edge or like better science, even though most of them, you know, go off into the abyss. You never heard, you'll never hear about them again. Um, and if you don't have enough money to compete, then you can't necessarily publish in good journals because you can't do the amount of work. You don't have access to the amount of, of equipment. And so um, everything in science is, is a system that feeds back in on itself. It's this terrible feedback loop that's just like, if you went to undergrad at Harvard, your chances of becoming a professor, a science, you know, getting a job as a scientific professor is like a hundred times more than if you went to, you know, some random state school. Why? Not because you're a good scientist or individual. That has nothing to do with it. And that's the problem. Like science, the people who win in the game of science aren't people who are actually good at science. Right. And how do you find that? I don't know. You make a more level playing field. You distribute things more equally. Right. It's a system that should be able to do these things because it's, it's non-governmental. It's not, there's no market forces driving it. Right. And so yeah. we should be able to, you know, but yeah, and you should be able to just do some science, do a good job, be careful, document all your work, and then just put it up on the internet for anybody to have access to and read. And that should be reasonably respectable science, you know, um, because you can bullshit your way to a paper and sell, or you can be really perfectly honest and have it just be on your blog and nobody knows about it, right? And like, you know, there's a bunch of fraud, fraudulent papers out there where people Photoshop their results and stuff like that. Oh, Sometimes I'm sure in most papers thing. there's some type of fraud. You know, whether, that's the thing, whether it's accidental or on purpose, because yeah. it's like, sometimes fraud isn't necessarily so... I remember when I was in graduate school and uh, this faculty candidate came for a job talk and, uh, you know, after job talks or something for the department, usually people would go out to the pub at the university and drink some beers and talk. And this person was like, yeah, you know, like I uh, was working on this research and this experiment wouldn't work for me or the results I getting more like interesting. And then I did the experiment again and I got interesting results and then I published it in nature. And now I'm like doing all these faculty talks and it's like, wait, that's not how it's supposed to work. Like, like you can't just like do an experiment 10 times. And then the one time the results are interesting, I'll publish those. Like it's not necessarily right. Like they're not like lying, but it's yeah. extremely misleading. Right. Yeah, it's like it's like then you try to replicate that study a few years later and it, it works like it did the first ten times for them, not not like it did the one weird yeah. time. Yeah. 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 I, I think the videos should be mandatory for uh, publications. And methods. Yeah. Well not yes. just not just that. I think like detailed methods, all data, raw data should be made available. Yeah. Right? Like 
there should be so much more than what is given, which is like sparse information on the methods and like details of what actually was done and like no raw data. Like there's no, unless you're doing like some bioinformatics shit. And even then, even if you're doing bioinformatics shit, a lot of times if it's like some important data, they won't make it available because they're just like, we don't want other people running experiments on our data because they're going to publish papers before we can, <laughs> you know, it's like, I thought that was the point to like have science done at a rapid pace so people could benefit from it. Yeah. It's just like, you know, <clears throat> this whole, this whole model is like a 1800s model of science, you know, like surely we could come up with something better. Yeah. It's just, uh, yeah, totally. And, uh, I think the first thing is like distribution, right? Distribution of knowledge and access and things like that, right? Because like the idea that all great ideas and research are going to come from, you know, some old white guys at Harvard is like ridiculous. Yeah. So it's just like, like, I wouldn't bet on that, you know? It's like if you gave me a bunch of money and we're like, all right, I want you to find people that you, you know, are going to bet on to make the next innovation. You know, there there would definitely be a lot more interesting people than what we see in science today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Hopefully. Sayana so Fed commented, do you guys think that uh, online science content will replace the publication system that science currently resolves around? And by you guys online content. On comments and show I them. can't I can't pin it no I don't think oh, we can. can but no, I, uh, I can read and by online content I mean streams vlogs even something a subscription platform I mean I think comment. it there can be a pay, like why don't make scientists like creators like why do youtubers uh earn so much money from like stupid videos when you can make scientists make videos about something really important and pay them and you know have like i don't know even on youtube you don't have to buy youtube premium but if you want to you have you can for like yeah. i don't know 4.99 right and that's and you get access to everything uh i think that's uh that's yeah the cool thing is, is that like uh public publishing is it's a replacement for actually it's funny because you know i remember when I was in graduate school and they were looking for new faculty for the university and uh, my professor, my mentor, you know, um, I asked them something like, you know, all, do all the faculty candidates you interview, do they have like, you know, papers in like nature and science and stuff like that? And uh, he was like, yeah, but I don't, I don't like that. And I was like, well, why don't you change it? You know, like why? And it's because like, well, that's what the grant funding agencies are looking for and other stuff like that. And I was like, why can't people just read the papers and decide if they have merit on their own? It doesn't seem like that complicated of a thing, right? right. Like you're a scientist, it's your field. Like I imagine you could like read the paper and have a good idea of the quality of the content and the work without having a journal tell you what it is. And it yeah. just comes down to the fact that people are lazy and like don't want to put in the work when it's just like and people don't want to give up their own prestige right that they have and it, when it's just like like i thought that was the basis for science is like so like people should just be putting their science online like, it's supposed to be a huge collaborative like effort of like all mankind right but we end up with it just being like a, a fistful of elites gatekeeping a lot of shit. yeah you know, like, imagine if we all, like, look at the coronavirus vaccine thing. That was so dumb. And yeah. that's the problem with humanity is, like, you have every different country trying to create their own vaccine when it's just like, what the fuck? You know, this doesn't make yeah. any sense. Like, why are there 50, why are there, like, two vaccines, three different types of vaccines in the U.S.? You know, yeah. like, it doesn't make any sense. And it's just weird that, like, as humanity, we haven't come together as scientists haven't come together to like solve problems. Instead, it's just straight up competition nowadays, right? Yeah. Because the goals are no longer like scientific truth. 
the goals are to get grants, to get publications, to get famous. And that's like, yeah. 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 And to this comment down here, it says most people don't have the IQ an IQ high enough to understand science, let alone question it. That's horseshit to start with. Most people aren't as dumb as most people think they are. Um, <laughs> And like, just because you didn't go to school or you don't have like a, you know, diploma or whatever, doesn't mean you can't learn and understand science. I mean, I did. So, you know, if you if you can just be like a dumbass redneck from Mississippi and understand science, I think a lot of people can understand science that you're underestimating. Yeah, I think that the thing is like people think they're not capable, and I think once you get over that to begin with, is that like anybody can learn to do science. Like none of us were you know, super capable people. You know, I practically failed out of high school. David didn't even go to high school, right? Like we're, we weren't like the, the super geniuses who are just like, oh yeah, of course we learned science and did this stuff. No, we're just the same as everybody else. That's the thing is that like anybody can do science, but scientists tell people that like, no, you can't, you need to go to graduate school. You need to know these certain things and learn these certain things. And that's, Yep. It's gatekeeping. It's dumb. It's just to like keep people away from their, you know, their thing. Yeah. And the whole thing is like, you know, if uh, this it, and it's kind of cyclical, right? So it's like it's like, oh, you're too dumb to learn science. And you tell people that their whole life and they're going to believe it. And then you write your papers in a way that's as convoluted and poor at emphatic communication yeah. as humanly possible. Yeah. <laughs> Of course, people don't understand it. You wrote a bunch of fucking gibberish. Like if yeah. you wrote it the way you would explain it to somebody, if you were talking face to face, people would understand it. Yeah. People aren't as dumb as people think they are. Yeah. I think it's science just... communication should have been like, okay, if you're a scientist, you're doing your paper. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can do whatever that uh, flex it is. That you know, sometimes you open a paper and you cannot understand what they're talking about. You read it like three times. You're still in the abstract, and you're like, "What is going on?" Yeah, it's just and we, I think it, it shouldn't be mandatory for scientists to, uh, I don't know, have like a, I don't know, like a one-page paper where you describe it like a, to a toddler, to a six-year-old, how it works. I think it's mandatory. If you if you're so smart, you should be smart enough to explain it to anyone. You know, no, maybe you scale it down or something, scale it up. But yeah, you have to do that because I think that should be mandatory. Yeah, and I think that's the thing is you know, uh, you know when people like, you know when people I think people will want to learn a lot more things. People love learning stuff. It's just when you tell them that they're too dumb and it's impossible, they give up. They're intimidated. It's not that they have just like science, science, but you know, science is just following a protocol, which is just a recipe. So if you yeah. like ever followed a recipe and like cooked something, baked bread, yeah. baked a cake, like you're doing the exact same thing everybody does in labs, right? Is there's no difference, like really no difference. That's the thing is like people separate these things in their head and scientists do also. They make it seem like, oh, only elite people can do this stuff, but it's really not true. It's really not true. Like we read the same recipes that everybody else does. We're not sitting there like, oh my God, I'm such a genius. Like, let me do all these genius things. <laughs> genius things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's, it's so crazy. Cause it's like, you know, you, um, once you get over like, like being into, I think it mostly takes like doing science on your own mostly takes confidence. Right. It's more about just yeah. being like, I can do this. Like, okay, there's a word I don't know. I'm gonna look that word up, and then just go to the next word until you finally get it. And and I think that's what most people lack is just like the confidence to keep going. And and I think that's uh, that's bigger than than like IQ or whatever. So I think you know people are just uh, you know I think scientists are, scientists are really bad at writing clearly. You know if, if you wrote a science fiction novel that was so full of gibberish that people couldn't understand it your editor would be like hey this is gibberish you're not you're not getting the plot across here and are you so, talking about the dune <laughs> no i love it uh but you know so if you're if you're uh so if your paper is just as badly written i feel like the editor should step in and say hey this is gibberish nobody can understand this 
you should write for everybody. And then people know what their, you know, National Science Foundation or whatever funding is going for. But if you write clearly enough, then people will actually understand what's going on. And then it creates say. problems because they will try to recreate it. And they'll be like, oh, <laughs> you actually, you yeah, little it sneaky. It like and, it, and it doesn't make you feel like a super genius to, to confuse people. Somehow, I don't understand why no. people want other people to not understand them. And that makes them feel smarter. Yeah. And, you know, science, science does need an incentive. Everything needs an incentive. Um, that's totally true. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the incentive of science should be outcome based, though, you know, like, let's create something yeah. instead of like, let's just find some knowledge and publish it, which is what it is right now, whether it has significance or <laughs> you get, I got to find this. Let me find this. Let me let me find this and I'll pull it up. Because I was like looking for uh, um, a link for like a really dumb paper, and this this paper is published in Science. So let me let me pull this up. Let me do a screen share. Um, it better be good if it was published in Science. Yeah, it's really good. And sexual de deprivation <laughs> increases ethanol intake in Drosophila. <laughs> Yeah. Too. <laughs> Somebody like studied this. And you're just like, wait, what is the purpose of that? Like, I'm super confused, you know? And they try to relate it to like neurotransmitter reward system or something like that. But it's like, come on. They're saying, they're saying horny fruit flies like to drink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never related to Drosophila before, but <laughs> no idea. Oh, I, I wonder if it was just like you know some grad students were like I wonder if I can you know do this and I I wonder if I can publish this and, and so I was like I bet and they just like did some it. dude's trying to justify his alcoholism you know he's like it's not me <laughs> my sexual deprivation uh, yeah. being a scientist you oh, know but gosh. it's like what what is the outcome of that research you know. Like, yeah. and it's published in Science Magazine, which is considered super prestigious. But like, what is the outcome? You know, and I think if people started doing scientific research, and I think biohacking generally is that way, biohackers and human beings in general, I think more like, what product, what thing am I going to create? You know, you don't like half baked bread in hopes that you failed or something. Well, I got some results out of it. No, you like baked bread to get something to eat out of it. And I think science should be very similar. The goals should be something tangible at the end. It shouldn't be like, I'm doing this to figure out, and don't get me wrong, there's some research that needs to be, you know, done to understand these basic principles. But I think that can be in the build up to the goal, right? It's like when you create a, a rocket that goes to outer space, the first person has to do all the testing to understand the aerodynamics, how new materials work and do all these things to create this original thing, right? They get to do the fundamental research, but it's goal driven. And I think that benefits everybody instead of just randomly doing stuff that you don't know what the outcome will be, right? I do think there's some benefit for exploring just like random spaces, but I think it, it definitely should be a minority. I mean, the search space is so large though. It's just like, it's, and people yeah. are always like, well, look, we, we, we learned about this thing, you know, because people were just doing like random fundamental research. But it's like you're implying that if people were doing directed, you know, goal driven research, we wouldn't have. Yeah, I don't think that's true. Right. Yeah, I think that's true either. Uh, yeah. So it's like uh, the, the premise is that like doing random research in the most massive search space we could ever imagine, you know, which is uncovering all the knowledge about the observable universe <laughs> yeah. and maybe other universes we don't right just like that way we, more information than humanity can ever imagine it'll we should just randomly it. look at stuff you know like <laughs> no i agree like if you're if you're like okay let's make let's make you know mars rockets well then you got like a set of things that you need to understand like well like what's the specific impulse of this you know 
rocket fuel or whatever. And so you got like a lot of things you got to do. So you got to do some chemistry and you got to do some this and you got to do some that. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, um, yeah, the search space is like unapproachably monstrous. You know, people say this a lot, but here's the thing is like, you're arguing a negative, right? You're arguing because that's the only way people have done research that it's the correct way to do it, which doesn't seem to make any sort of sense scientifically. Also, math is a much, much smaller field than everything in the universe. Yeah, but still, even even math, right? Like, and I, I think a lot of math also is directed towards goals, right? I'm trying to solve or, you know, figure out this this thing this reason you know and so like the thing that i think that's the thing is that everybody always makes this point that like ooh, we have to because that's the way we've done it and so that's the best way but that seems like the worst argument ever you're telling me that in all of human history we've only done one thing one way and that's the best way i don't think there's anything that exists that you could say is that right and people haven't tried other methods extensively or done a search scientifically to see which methods work best and what's the most productive way to uncover knowledge in math or science or anything like that you know there's no like head-to-head -head comparison look we took these five excellent math researchers and we had each one do different research for their whole lives and like see which method turned out the best for each person and there's so much variability in that and also it's hard but like we, we don't do that that would be the scientific way to do it you'd think you know yeah it's like to scientifically figure out what science which way to do science is the <laughs> yeah just then just circular and you have, to, you have to do the study again with the new science that wins that one <laughs> it holds up yeah yeah, I mean, you know, also it's just like, you know, math, because like that that study with the with the fruit flies, like you could presumably repeat that with every species on the planet, right? See if it mm -hmm. holds true for every species. And then you could change substances and repeat it for every species again. And then you could change like what you're depriving them of and see if and it, people do. People do. Yeah. And then like we knocked out a gene and we did the experiment again, right? Because it gets published. Yeah. Because the goal is publication. It's not coming to some goal or conclusion and if it was coming to some goal or conclusion you know yeah. it's just like the amount of scientific publications that are published every year is fucking ridiculous we can look it up let's go to scholar.google.com and you could search we'll just say the well, that that might um custom date range articles that have the word the on it mm -hmm. in 2020 <laughs> that's going to be almost all of them mm -hmm. there's one article that specifically doesn't have the in it at all so this just says one it, it's funny it matches somebody's one million two hundred thousand articles right so if we assume wow. the average article is 10 pages that is uh ten million two hundred thousand yeah or ten million yeah 12 whatever Okay, the average book is what, like 300 pages? It's pretty, yeah. So if we do 10 million <laughs> divided by 300, how many books is that? 33,333 books. That's how much volume of information that is. Like, I don't even think anybody could read that in a lifetime. Yeah. Like, what if you read like, like book uh, a week and there's like 56 weeks? So. How much was it? 3,000? 33,333. Yeah, so 52 weeks a year. So if you lived to be, let's say, you, you did that for 80 years. 589 <laughs> years. Oh. 589 years it would take you <laughs> to just read one year. That's one year's worth of scientific publishing. Just yeah, one year. 580 eight years behind now like i think <laughs> we need to figure out a better way to you know uh do this stuff and make information available and i yeah. don't think that way is the way we're doing it yeah and you know people doing yeah 
and that's the thing. So, and I do agree. Like just searching around randomly, sometimes you bump into something. But yeah, I, I do think it makes more sense to be like, like industry does. You know, it's like okay, we're do, we're going to try and cure this disease, so we need to do research on X, Y, Z. But then we run into a big unknown, so we need to research that unknown to see if we can fix that because that's going to help us solve the thing. Yeah, I think though the idea that we randomly helps us find things is, is, is false, right? It, it's just statistically false, right? If you think about like any sort of complex random walk, yeah, right? Like a search, like a maze solving algorithm. Yeah, any type of space you're trying to search, like it's never usually the random is never the best way. <laughs> yeah. Like every other thing that you do you'll probably you will achieve better results than if you just do random right yeah and plus it's like random plus popular which is extra weird yeah it's like after CRISPR came out there were like a billion papers that came out about CRISPR, you know and even though like none of them really added anything so like if somebody like makes a CRISPR paper they don't reference the billion papers they just reference like the three first ones or whatever <laughs> so it's just yeah. like you know yeah, it's like uh, somebody finds something interesting randomly in the dark and then, then everybody just hovers around it for a while. And... Yeah, because imagine if, like, there were no journals to publish stuff in. Um, the incentive to do research would completely change. Yeah. Right? Because you would no longer be incentivized by getting publications. So you'd be incentivized either by, like, doing stuff that really impresses people so or you stand people... out. Yeah, or you do stuff that you create something with. Yeah. That there's some outcome at the end. Yeah. Right? It would be totally different. Yeah, it's true. Because you'd be like, hey, I'm doing research into rocketry, but not like just to see, you know, if fruit flies like rockets or not. But like, I'm doing research into rocketry because my rocket's going to be better than your rockets. And then I'll fly faster, cheaper, better. Yeah. Yeah, and then it's like they made it and they published how they did it online and all their information and results. And then somebody else is like, I'm going to make one better than that. And like, you know, the, the, the incentive would totally change. It would be like to actually have real world out, applied outcomes in science, which I think is like the whole point of science, right? Like knowledge gathering for knowledge gathering sake, sure, do it, whatever you want. I don't care. But like that doesn't benefit anybody. Yeah. And almost all of it will be lost. Yeah. It's like that like, fruit flag paper you just showed, like in a, in 700 years, how many people are going to have any knowledge of that paper's existence? Zero, right? Yeah. Probably After. Drosophila wouldn't even exist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Or it will. No. It'll just be like, they'll be like eight feet tall and, and, and self-aware and flying spaceships around and we're at war with them. <laughs> they yeah. got too whispered. Huh. And they're drinking because they're sexually depressed. <laughs> right. And then somebody like, knew it. Go, we figured it out. <laughs> we knew it. We knew it all along. <laughs> the reason fruit flies drink so much is because they don't get to have sex often. Right. <laughs> oh, oh God. Man. I don't want to comment on many circles. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we'll man. just leave that one there. Yeah. <laughs> And there's uh, somebody commented on, uh, you know, scientists are incentivized by, uh, they won't get grants if, they are, if their research isn't useful. But like, I think that's obviously not true because people do non-useful research. And it also... Uh, the majority of research is not useful. Like, yeah. majority, like out of those 1,200,000 papers, more than that, that's just the ones that are, you know, on Google and have the word done them. <laughs> Yeah. Um, like of those papers from last year, the amount that were significant and probably contributed to something half the number in the thousands or less, yeah. right? So it's definitely not a hundred thousand, like a hundred thousand papers didn't contribute to some change in our society or some applied thing, right? right. That's way too many. So you're probably talking, you know, less than 10,000, probably even less than that. You know, I might argue just based yeah. on like, the amount of things that get developed in society and worked on you're talking in the hundreds or like low thousands and so it's like 
do something useful. Like majority of science is, is not useful, you know, at yeah. least not in any significant way. Right. And it's because the way resources are distributed and a lot of other things. So you have scientists who are working on stuff that they can only afford to, or like, you know, publish on instead of things again, that actually create something. And so it's just like, yeah. And people that give grants, you know, I mean, they, they give grants for a lot of reasons and not all of them are like, this is really like, like these guys don't have foresight into the future where they like can know what's going to be good. Like they just are going with their guts, you know, and sometimes it's like their buddies or the prestige of the institution that the grant is, is, you know, proposed to go to, or it's like, you know, tax fraud. Yeah. Or this is my pet project. And I think it's going to lead to something really important because I'm super into CRISPR. So I'm going to write a grant to anybody who uses the word CRISPR. Like obviously knowledge is based on accumulation of knowledge is based on previous knowledge, but like how much is that true? Like how much knowledge do you actually use in this? Like most citations in a scientific paper aren't from knowledge that is used to do the experiments for the scientific paper, right? It's usually very little, right? The, the methods, obviously, but most of that stuff is like, even if you had to solve it from scratch nowadays with modern equipment and technology, it would take you very little time, you know? It, um, and so it's like, mm, sure, like, uh, sure, we like stand on the shoulders of giants, you know? But it, that's like saying like society progresses. Yeah. Like, yeah, it does. You know, like we don't have automobiles that were the same way that they were a hundred years ago. Yeah. But it's also know? it's a signal versus noise thing. You know, it's like lots and lots of noise, very little signal. Uh, if you're just randomly accumulating random bits of information and calling them progress yeah like the things that are actually yeah the things that are actually progress or like useful is like very small right yeah like like you could you can you can like look at static on a tv and record all the data but it doesn't mean that any of the data means anything yeah yeah and you'll get results that's the thing is like yeah. things tend towards some sort of distribution yeah <laughs> like whatever it is whether it's static on a TV, whether it's whatever. So you can observe random or semi-random phenomenon or whatever. And like, you know, yeah. there's actually this really good article written by one of my friends, Mike Solana. Um, what is that blog? Oh God, I can't think of the name. It was on a like paranormal research research or like parapsychic whatever research like on um people can like read minds and do all this stuff and, and, and like yeah and uh it's interesting because a lot of this stuff is immediately dismissed under the assumption that we know everything that there is to know about the world and who we are and all the physical laws that exist yeah. but that's totally not true yeah right? definitely and so it's like the idea that you know we know like it, it's all the things we know nowadays 50 years ago or even less you people would think that it's crazy to like no that's not true science is wrong a lot you know it's a it's a system that isn't necessarily built in the best way to um like deliver knowledge share knowledge and build on knowledge and information yeah it's interesting because you know there's a um yeah the fundamental question is how ought we proceed with the process of developing science or developing like a better understanding of the universe and how things work in ways that we can use to improve our lives you know? yeah I mean, that's the goal of being a human, isn't it? Like, yeah. shit. <laughs> to make sure I don't suffer as much for the time yeah. I'm here and make sure my kids don't suffer that much for the time they're here. Like, that's pretty much it. Like, I don't, I don't really know what any other goal I have. 
Yeah, exactly. Right. And, and so it's just like, you know, all right, well, if you had to design the optimal system, would it be what it is? And I don't think any scientist would say, yes, I would design it exactly like it is now. It is flawless. Yeah. <laughs> you know? No, not at all. I think I, you know, the whole system needs to be gutted personally. It's just like, you know, what's redeemable about the system? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And I like, do think, you know. Going to school to become a scientist, like, that's not redeemable. Like, that's terrible the way that science works. It's so gatekeepy and it, 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 it extremely creates lack lack of diversity of thought right in science like publishing sucks getting grants like most professional scientists like people who have faculty jobs they spend most of their time writing grants yeah yeah, yeah. it's kind of pathetic yeah, like can you imagine your whole job is being is begging for money like you're yeah, literally like a homeless person Oh no, and they say you spend your whole life, you're like, I'm gonna be a scientist, I'm gonna grow up and do science, win the Nobel Prize and change the world, and you like go to yeah. school and do all Pure the things. cancer. Yeah, and at the end you just end up And then you're just like, Dear Mr. Epstein, please <laughs> give me some money. And yeah. I can prove scientifically that you're not a pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> didn't his didn't he okay, didn't his like father in law invent the scientific publishing model? The like Oh Epstein, I have no idea. Yeah, because yeah. what I mean, what's her name? Uh, she went to trial. Jocelyn, Jocelyn Maxwell. Yeah, Jocelyn. Maxwell. Yeah, her her dad was a publisher, uh, who invented the like scientific. Oh publishing. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was very rich. Yeah, yeah. He was like a publisher. No, I, here's the thing: is that like you don't. It's like, you know, this idea that science needs a gatekeeper or a distribution mechanism or something like that like i think that's totally wrong and i think starting with that premise is totally wrong right i think there's tons of things out there that are already super useful and available and like you know like i learn more about scientific research on social media than i do any other way because people just post what they're working on Hey, look, I worked on this. I did this. Here are the results from this thing I did. Like, sure, you have to follow these people who do scientific research, but like, is that really that difficult to yeah. like? Like and subscribe? <laughs> yeah. Like, find oh, people yeah. who do scientific research? I don't think so. Right. And uh, like, you get to choose and you get to pick what's interesting and stuff like that. But like, the, the way the internet is nowadays, it's not hard to search the internet for any sort of scientific research it doesn't matter if it's on a blog or a scientific paper or like where a youtube video or a TikTok. well TikTok is hard i guess if you're trying to search the internet for it but you know what i mean like there's a lot more of that less so with science but more so with just like uh engineering and diy construction stuff uh on like youtube like you can go on youtube and you can find like some dude who's turning his car into a robot you know uh, so you can drive around a big mech and you could like follow his like whole progress, you know, as he's like slowly doing this thing or somebody's doing all sorts of crazy, interesting projects and people watch that stuff and learn. Follow they got millions of views. Like, yeah, even like, if we talk about, you know, there's someone wrote down a comment that like, oh, science is not interesting. Like there's channels like, what is it? Vsauce, Veritasium. Mm -hmm. They're not scientists conventionally, but they can. <clears throat> sorry, communicate science yeah. really well. And they get like 10 millions of views just because they make it interesting. So why can't you be like a cred credible scientist? Just like show what you do. Yeah. Like it's interesting. Same, same. I, uh, pretty yeah. soothing, actually. <laughs> I like how it makes you feel yeah. like, shit, I could do that. That seems so much cheaper than buying a house. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> It's like these two guys who are like brothers in the forest who are always like digging holes in the ground and making like pools and like houses. That's so entertaining. I know. It's like I always ASMR. Think that. I'm always like, wait, wait till it rains though. It's gonna be a wreck. <laughs> also, like, well, they actually do stuff to like I don't know make you know like old school techniques to, like harden it and all okay. this other yeah. stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. So usually it's like I don't know. I don't know how long it lasts. But yeah. I feel like, yeah, yeah, it's interesting. 
but yeah, I, you know, I think I think people will uh... <laughs> don't ruin our, our illusions, David. <laughs> I think people will. Um, I think people will follow stuff like that. I think people will be interested. I think people will learn more, and I think people will be able to contribute more because you watch you'll watch a lot of these like high end engineering things. They'll be like, oh yeah, last time I was having trouble with this, but this engineer and that engineer and that engineer said, hey, have you considered using this? And then that solved my problem. So like, it makes it a lot more collaborative between people. Like, there's much more opportunity for unexpected like collaboration and and opportunity because like, if it's just like you and your lab and the four people that work there, and that's all that's ever going to be involved in this pro in this project. That's just it. Like, unless you email somebody, nobody ever knows. But like, yeah. put it out there during the process. There's opportunities yeah. that you can't anticipate. Yeah. And also, mm -hmm. what is it? A publication bias when people don't um, don't post their research just because it's insignificant. Like, it's not. Yeah. What is it? Uh, there's like a s statistical value of your. Um, yeah. Research, yeah. even though the stati statistical value was made up because it's like a concept, yeah, totally by, like the, it was just asked by a dude, one of the like coin vendors of the statistical model. And what's the good, you know, the statistical, was it a power or whatever? And he yeah. just said, oh, 0 0.5. So now everyone tries to like reach that, uh, even though it's pretty much made up. Yeah. It, it also is like, what if it's like, what if it's like, just not quite, you know, like, yeah. Like, how close do you have to get before it's like, nah, fuck it, doesn't matter. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's just weird that it's like a hard line. And then between different subjects. Well, it's tough, it's right? Because it would, statistical significance only matters in things where you're trying to prove a point. When you already have a predetermined point of view that you're trying to support, instead of when you're actually trying to, you know, Create something. Nobody's like, yes, our rocket, you know, launched yeah. statistically significantly. No, like it did or it didn't. You know, like did it's it either work a fireball or, or a rocket? <laughs> did it work yeah. or not work? And that's the yeah. funny thing. Sure, I get there's certain things where that's not always true, but statistics. Oh God, it's so misused and it's kind of fucking bullshit because it's just like, there's no way where statistics doesn't have some amount of like inherent error, right? Because the universe doesn't obey strict mathematical laws that we try to force it into, you know? And so it's just like, one of the funny things about statistics is like with normal distributions is just like sampling um, is, is just that like the more you sample, the more your distribution tends to be normal and has like a, a, a normalized mean, right? You know, your typical bell curve type thing. And that's just like taking more samples. So, so you're telling me you can completely change your statistical distribution by taking more samples. Yes, you can, <laughs> right? And that's just like, oh, I don't know. Like, what? Especially, especially if you start doing stuff like kicking out outliers and doing stuff like this. <laughs> so it's just like, it, these things aren't so you know like you know like yeah. cut and dry and like straight edge like people want to imagine that like oh it's statistics that must mean it's right because it used maths yeah. and it's like no uh -uh. that makes it true yeah it doesn't it doesn't have anything to do with it like the reason you're using the maths uh, is should be the correct reason and most of the time it's not because like statistic most things don't follow like statistics easily right Especially when there's like a lot of outside influence, you know, it's just like, yeah. <sighs> yeah, especially like if you did an earlier study where you figured out which cohort would most is like most responsive to your thing, like you're doing a drug study. So you like test a bunch of different kinds of people find that like men 18 to 25 are the most reactive to your drug. Then you do a whole study with nothing but men 18 to 25. <laughs> it's like, oh yes, we got a strong. That's what they do. That's what drug companies do, right? No, <laughs> that, and that's super fucked up. So then they can send it to the FDA and it could get approved. And it's like, I don't know. This is funny. Yeah. Chi-square tests are kind of like cold psychology 
psychic sessions, but for science. Chi squared is just like a statistical test, and you just apply it to try to get like significant results between, you know, samples and stuff like that. And it's funny, that's the way statistics are used. It's just like, let me see if something is statistically, I'll just like take this data and plug it in. And if it doesn't work, let me like take this other data or this other test and see if it's true. Yeah. You know, it's <laughs> add enough things together, you eventually get something. Compare pair enough different things and add enough data, like eventually something's going to happen. Yeah. Which, you know, some which... scientists be talking about how s statistics is so important and then they'll, they'll be faking their own like statistical data <laughs> in the paper. I'm like, dude. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing is like, that is one really big benefit about like, like, you know, if you're doing your work based on trying to create a thing, because then like, how do you bullshit that? You know, if your airplane doesn't fly, nobody's going to believe you. Yeah, I do like that because it's a lot easier to bullshit with statistics. Yeah, and Flack Monkey is asking all the real questions. How possible are things like brain in a vat, artificial blood, head transplants, <laughs> and can biotech help achieve it ethically? <laughs> oh, man. Those um, are the important head questions. Head transplant is an interesting question. <laughs> I don't know. I'll uh, ask Alex Perlman. <laughs> Here's the thing is that like, I think that's a great part. Of, I, I read, there's actually this good essay. It was written by this person in the seventies who was doing like brain transplants between like different species of animal. Oh, so I think shit. it was like, it was like some form of aquatic, like lizard and like a frog or some shit like that. In the way that this person tested whether the transplant worked, because like it didn't integrate completely, so they didn't have like ocular, they couldn't see, but I think they could still move their limbs and shit. Oh fuck! And uh, so uh, this person tested whether the animal responded to the smell of food that one animal enjoyed and the other animal didn't, and they did. Wow! So they they concluded that like the brain transplant, like it was the actual brain that was like, you know, causing, but like research on shit like that has just, it's not cool anymore. Like people think it's taboo and weird and stuff yeah. like that. But like that shit's crazy. Yeah. That like, you know, you can trans, like there's been studies of people transplanting brains between animals and like, obviously those brains aren't that sophisticated. <laughs> But like, oh. yeah, it'd be interesting to, you know, have people do research on stuff like, but you can't because it's just like science, academic science won't allow you to, right? Yeah. That's the other big problem with academic science is like, because it's so driven by publications, right? If you can't publish it, then you can't get grants and you can't get faculty jobs and you can't get all this other stuff. And the only things you can publish is things that everybody else agrees with, you know? Even if you found out that, like, you know, anthropogenic climate change is wrong with, like, you know, 100% data to back it up, like, they wouldn't let you publish it, right? right? Yeah. And, you know, that's the thing is it's also, like, uh, you know, things like, like, like head transplants, you know? Like, there was some guy who was talking about doing a head transplant in Russia or something like that, like, five years ago. Yeah, of course, it's going to be a rush. <laughs> and they talked about it uh, briefly. Um, but like all the articles, all the things that came out were just like instant negative, you know, like all the like news reports and stuff like that were just like, this is a horrible thing to do. So it's like obviously very slanted, but I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who could really benefit from a head transplant, right? You know, if your body's just completely fucked up and your head's fine, you spend the rest of your somebody life. Somebody gets shot in the head, you know? Yeah, exactly. You know, somebody shot in the head, their body's fine, they're dead, and, and you're like crushed in a, you know, wheelbarrow accident from the neck down, you're completely a wreck. You, you got like, like, that would be a great option if you could just replace everything. But yeah. they immediately were just like, oh, this is terrible. Uh, so there's also like a lot of media. Uh, but opinion. it's different how, how you draw the line. So you can get like, I don't know, five organs transplanted and the time you can get your yeah. bone marrow 
uh, transplant. You can get so many, uh, and even like blood transfusions mm-hmm. don't even count like anything. Because, uh, but if it's a body, it's yeah. already like well. Yeah, it is weird how the ethics uh, depend on how comfortable we are with it. You know, like I'm yeah. sure somebody the first time somebody was like, "Oh, we're gonna put." Uh, uh, we're going to transplant a heart. So I'm, I'm sure a lot of people were like, that seems fucked up. We shouldn't be doing that. We're playing God. No, for sure. Yeah. 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 No, I, I think the crazy like thing is, is that like, ethicists always are the same way. And it's like never change. I think that's the funny thing about ethicists is they're never like, this one I think we should go ahead with. It's always no, just never. no. It's just like always no. You know, there's never like. It's like, like your one... parents when you're a kid. Can yeah. I? No. Um, I would believe them a lot more if they were just like, all right, this one we're okay with. (laughs) But they're always like, no. They're like, no, we're not okay with this. We're not ready for this. It is. And then after it's done, they're like, okay, we're, you know, once everybody else agrees with it, they're good. And so it's just funny. It's like, what what is the use of ethicism? It's like, you know, when you're like telling your, if you're a parent, you're telling your teenager you're no to every single thing. They're going to do it behind your back and not tell you and probably not going to do it safely. So maybe it's better to, you know, say yes and do it in a controllable whatever. You can negotiate. You can always negotiate to a point when uh, no one is satisfied, but it's uh, social acceptable. So why not do that? Yeah. And that's the thing is it's just like, you know, you just become like a, a echo chamber of the public fear, you know, rather yeah. than really like doing the process of ethics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't talk about Blade Runner 2049 in here. We pretend like that movie doesn't exist. Which one? I like it. Blade, Blade Runner? Runner 20... Yeah, but Dave, like you like it. every movie. I do. No, Blade Runner 2049, not Blade Runner. <laughs> I liked point I with Ryan Gosling. I liked it. Really? So you're yeah. Yeah. I remember. I like. When did it come out? I think I was like. I just got into university, and a, a boy invited me for a date, and I was like, okay, let's go see Blade Runner. And he fell asleep, and we never talked again <laughs> during the movie. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not as good as Blade Runner. Blade Runner, but it's yeah. not a bad movie. I think it is. I think it's terrible. It doesn't make any sense. Come on. What's going on here? I think, honestly, but it's like, what is it, Denis Villeneuve, his movies are all like this, right? I really like his movies. It's like, let's make yeah. stuff that's really cinematically pretty, but don't make sense at all. I don't care. I I'll th- just sit there and look at the I feel show. like Blade Runner 2040 <laughs> is if I want to look at made more sense than Dune. Watch, like, I'll just watch the landscape, you know, like drone over land. Oh yeah, that, that was good. Watch, that was good. I would watch that, or like the Northern Lights, like in uh, like a like a time lapse. Yeah, Those, yeah. I like just his approach when we got high uh, yeah, at your you know, place, and so you have like a huge TV, Earth and you just moods, play like drone. Is. What's it again? It's a good Earth suggestion. Moods. <laughs> yeah, no. just get high and watch Earth Moods. Earth. I would totally rather do that. Watch like Dune or Blade Runner twenty forty nine. No, Dune was horrible. Honestly, it was beautiful, but it just it looked like a Dior fragrance uh, advertisement. With Zendaya <laughs> just being like her whole just like she just had blue eyes and she was just like I'm mysterious. <laughs> Don't say that. Then you spend three back. hours and then there's just like part two coming in and you're just like now I have I to see a part two. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it just we have to accept that there are just some books that cannot be made into movies and that's okay just it's or okay just like you know you, you don't have the problem is, is they're just trying to sell it so hard also right so they're gonna put in like it's like when they made the hobbit into like three movies like I oh just God, that do was it. a mess that was a hot mess that's one movie i will not get behind i was just like you know like no i can't i think i watched the first one and then i was just like no yeah. Yeah, um, I can't do this. Like, I haven't watched any of the other ones because it's just like it, the story is not that long and interesting. Where it deserves three movies. You know? <laughs> yeah, they added a whole bunch of crap and then took out a bunch of stuff that was in there that would have been great, and they they added a bunch of stuff. It's like just get up. to the get to the point. You know, like I've been watching some of these like documentaries lately, um, and they used to make them like ten episodes, and now they're like four episodes, and they don't drag it out. And you're like, that's perfect. You know? Yeah. 
Like but you can make like a one hour documentary and now they make it, it also a four hour documentary. So it's like, it's just like a four hour documentary. It's like, I was watching this documentary on the Netflix about a polygamous child abusers from America, obviously. So it's like a religious cult. And it was four hours. So it was four parts. And of course, I was so interested at like 1 a.m. And I had to like binge watch. And I was like, this all could could have been, you know, told in like one hour session. And there's still an open end. And you're like, Jesus, come on. I get the like, Dune is hard to get, but like honestly, the thing about Dune is like all anybody wants is just like just show the fucking you know fucking sandworms and like sandworms fucking awesome in that yeah. people yeah. fighting and and like that's it like you don't need anything else like what are we trying to do we're trying to make this like Game of Thrones or some shit you know that's what I think I'm if they remade Game of Thrones again under a different yeah, name sorry. nobody would watch it because it was fucking boring like nothing happened in Game of Thrones. That was, it, was, it, was, it definitely dragged in parts. I think just like, I never watched it. The one fight that they have where like all the zombies show up and they fight at Winterfell, like that's that's the only thing worth rewatching in the whole thing because that was awesome. It was yeah, I don't think I'll, I don't know why ever watch Game of Thrones like ever yeah. just because it's just like I don't you know and it's just like come on you can like condense this down and just show the cool like. You know, like Marvel movies. It's like nobody's expecting Dune to like, I don't know, be some work of genius that's like blows everybody away. No, it's just like, you know, just have people blow shit up and kill shit and giant sandworms. Like, that's all you need. I think that's what the 70s version was. <laughs> was it, it was uh, better... Jodorowsky's uh, movie? <laughs> David Lynch, yeah. David Lynch made a Dune? Yeah, way back in the day. Uh, for some reason, I thought it was Jodorowsky. Now, everyone who's like into movies are going to be so like, how can you not know a difference? I mean, there is a big difference, but still. Oh my gosh, I would watch... I, 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 now I want to watch David Lynch's Dune. I mean, it wasn't bad. It just wasn't Dune. You should watch uh, the sci-fi the sci-fi channel. They made like oh, a four-part four part series or something. Um, on Dune... I think that one's really good. Yeah. It was definitely better, and I like that they went further because they actually went into like Children of Dune, which I think is the more interesting story than Dune. So like Dune is like almost a prequel to the real story in my mind. Yeah, right on. But yeah, it's you know it's uh, yeah because it's just like ugh. and like Timothy Chalamet, like I don't I feel like I just want to punch him in the face all the time. <laughs> I know. I like. I have such a big hate love relationship with him. Like, I I want to hate him, but like, he's first of all, he's really handsome, and I hate his appearance because like he's a good actor. Actually, I enjoyed uh, different movies, not the Dune, but he's other. Scared. You say he's but then, you hate him. <laughs> yeah, and you're. I hate and like I love it because like he's too like he's too like chiseled like his face looks like a i don't know he looks like a fox he looks like a bicycle seat with his like a bone structure <laughs> oh. and i hate that ever like he's conventionally attractive and i hate that <laughs> do you <laughs> like that <laughs> yeah I, I guess i didn't think about it that that hard but like uh you know i don't know i thought the movie uh like dune was beautiful and I don't know. I think part of what helps is I had the book like running in my head. So I'm like putting a lot of stuff on like their little micro expressions. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> they really I never read no. the Dune. So it made no sense to me. Okay. Yeah. I think it would help if you like read Dune and then watch it. I don't. Why do I have to yeah, read the book to, to watch Dune, a movie? But... Okay. So maybe that's the difference between us. I read Dune. So, you know. Yeah. No. Well, you don't have to read the book to watch the movie. Like, I think in this case you might, <laughs> but it, it should it should it should be self explanatory though. I mean, that's like the yeah. point. I mean, sure, sure, but I don't care. I don't care what it should be. I just like I, I enjoyed the experience of watching it. You know. But yeah. Foxy bike seat. Foxy bike seat. <laughs> wow. Timothy <laughs> Chalamet. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. Like he, he was good in like low budget movies, like Call Me by Your Name. What is it? When he was a, a dr drug addict and like stuff like that, he was oh. really good in it. When he actually had to like act and there was like a good script, it, it was good. I don't think I've seen that one. 
Uh-oh. Anyway, there might be a biohacker season three. I haven't seen oh, season Oh gosh. Two. Second season, season two. was horrible. In second season there was nothing about biohacking. Yeah, I got the I got the feeling that was what was gonna happen because by the end of season one there was nothing about biohacking. It was, it was just like regular trust like, me calm drama season one in like biohacking term is like a 10 compared to season two in season two there's nothing about nothing about science even do people it like was just company? like how can we set this up can we like mm, no that doesn't i'm work. so tiny let me out <laughs> <laughs> Oh, We're just trying so to I, I everybody's always like they want to see the comments and everything like that but i guess you know if it, somebody make a just, comment and oh wait can i like resize i think there should be like a they can be like a bot or something for comments or something yeah <laughs> i guess we could display them it, it, it just like yeah there's three of us wait, wait let's see what about is I that one better cool. Or worse. Yeah. Well, you can see I more surrounding. Like I, I like to be like snuggled. <laughs> yeah, you like to be snugged in there. I have social anxiety. I need to be like, I mean, not social anxiety. I'm a, the other way. <laughs> the whole Brain show is, like poop, disease, poop. is that bad? I, I feel know. so alone now. I feel like, see, now you can see our surroundings are like we're, we're very alone. Yeah, you don't like this? Can we no, get a vote? I, I mean, I, I think you definitely have the least exciting surroundings. You got all that color, <laughs> some science yeah. stuff. You have a plant. <laughs> yeah, I have a dying plant here. I have a dog behind the scene, too. Wait, you have a dog? Uh, I'm dog sitting this week we'll see for the my dog. friends. Get the dog on camera. You, wa- you want to see the dog? Okay, Let's no, if uh, I need someone, if someone's going to make a funny comment i'm gonna show a dog show the dog it's really cute someone's gonna like actually make me laugh wait why does somebody have to make you laugh because i'm not getting up for free i need to like (laughs) i need need serotonin boost to (laughs) to get to motivate you okay Um, okay whatever i will show the dog do you think people i don't I think we had a discussion about this a little bit ago about like uh digital dna computing and bullshit like that like it doesn't make any sense in any way right that's the thing is that like computers oh there's a dog nice the dog's like why why are you holding what am i doing I just love how some dogs get really stiff when you pick them up. Yeah, but computing, like, right, your your computer processor functions at a rate of, like, a trillion, you know, actions per second or something like that. And, like, no, no biological process can come even close to that. Yeah. Right? That's, yeah, like, faster than, stuff than the rate of diffusion. Parallel. And so it's just like, it, it, it doesn't really make any sense to do like biological computing. It'll never be able to compete with regular computing. And why would you even want to do that? Like, why? Why would you need a biological processor? Um, but the interesting idea, you know, I was going to actually do a talk on this one time, was that like uh, biological systems are computers, but for like building structures, right? They're solving like, they're like chaos computers. They're solving problems that there's not an equation that we can write to solve. They're solving the problem of like, how do you make a tree, right? How do you make a tree? Something that's like the structure and function of a tree. You plant a seed in the ground and it turns into a tree. So that's some type of computer that's solving this problem of like being alive and growing. Um, I think that's way more interesting in how to find and apply um, biology to problems that require things like that plus the term chaos computer is just really cool yeah it is (laughs) i mean i want a chaos computer (laughs) okay i I like this comment system shock was a great game and also excited about the remake i don't know what system shock is well it was great 
Yeah, I mean, the thing about, you know, artificial intelligence and brains and machines and stuff like that is they do two different things, right? Like you're trying to do different things. So it's, it's, uh, it's hard to compare. People try to compare like brains and computers, but it's like a, a computer is optimizing for like uh, computations it can do where the brain's not. It's optimizing for extremely complex things that like, are very difficult for computers to do, right? And uh, that's that's the difference. Will computers ever be as good as humans at doing these things? Maybe I don't know. Um, it, it's tough, right? Because like I could throw a ball at you and you could catch it really easily, or at least have it bounce off your hand. Yeah, <laughs> like, I was like, I'm not sure about it. <laughs> <laughs> but like to do that with a robot is like impossible you know at any sort of speed right yeah. sure if you just like toss it gently you know you could make something that's like ee. Yeah. but if you're just like throwing a fastball at some shit and there's no idea where it's gonna go like the chances it's gonna be able to catch that thing is like crazy but like human beings do that all the time or like driving right it's yeah. crazy like there's self-driving cars it's never gonna be a thing like not anytime recently not in the way we're trying to do it Okay, uh, about self-driving cars, I, I, am I the only one who thinks this is, like, one of the most stupid ideas ever made to, like, a humankind, and I'm so tired of, like, crypto and tech bros telling me that <laughs> it's such a good idea? I'm like, I just want a public transport. Like, come to Europe. This is how people should live. There just should be affordable public transport for everyone. And that's it. Sure, I mean, I get it, that, like... Some people want to do things on their own time and schedule and they have different schedules than public transit and yeah. you could do it. Here's the thing is that like, if, if every, if all the car manufacturers came together and were like, let's put sensors on all of our cars so they could communicate with each other. Yeah. Right. Well, that's the and big thing. Sensors on the roads so that all the cars can know what they're doing. Like you'd be able to solve this problem pretty quick. Yeah. You know, yeah, you need infrastructure. Yeah. Yeah. But instead they're just like, Let's just try to solve this problem with like artificial intelligence. It's like, come on, like driving is one something that's extremely hard to do. <laughs> yeah, and it's, so it's, Elon Musk, come on, the, his idea to make like what is it, Hyperloop, a tunnel, like uh, under LA to solve tr like traffic, which like literally didn't work. I'm like, stop hyping up dudes that are just rich and white and just post memes on Twitter. It doesn't mean that they're genius. <laughs> I know. I'm serious. I got this crazy dumb idea. I I mean, yeah. I like how Tech the dog is so stoic. Somebody to look up to, you know? I, this dog doesn't like Elon Musk too, right? <laughs> I have nothing against Elon Musk. You know, like, I don't know. He seems like a normal person he just seems like a normal person that kind of also accidentally got really wealthy you know <laughs> like if he was just some random person on the street it'd just be like yeah you know telling me about his idea to drill holes under la and drive cars would be like all right man it's whatever a you subway but with cars <laughs> but with teslas yeah so i like cars. i like living in the country so there's no way i can like bus 80 miles to work and back and i'm not moving to a city justice for like oh. yeah i know elon musk yeah. is a blood diamond yeah I'm, I'm not like you know i don't really know the person so like i don't i don't really have someone like, invite elon musk on our next stream so maybe we can <laughs> diss him in person about him you know it's like seems nice enough i don't know yeah <laughs> but it's just like yeah i don't know i, I think that's well i just i just elon musk because of the neural link well first of all all of their monkeys died with their uh, procedure and they like tried to hide it second of all when they posted they published a paper and literally elon musk's know nothing about like he's not a um, yeah. neuroscientist it's a like, super complicated topic and he like published uh, that, so it was a title, blah, 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 something Neuralink stuff. And in the author section, it was just Elon Musk and Neuralink Tim. And I'm like, that dude has a small penis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, like, who does um, this? Like, he... Yeah. 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 I feel that. Or it's just like, if you didn't do the work, why... Why claim? He, He definitely has this claim of, like, he's a genius, but, like, he doesn't do any of the work, so it's just like, eh... I'm just but to... whatever. I mean, like, I, I think the whole thing is, is that, like, if he was just your friend hanging out, you'd, you'd, you'd hang out with him, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, I guess. It's just the fact that he's, like, some billionaire who, like, acts, you know, like a billionaire that everybody's, like, bothered by him or loves him so much when he'd just be, like, that one guy who, you know, sits on the couch and drink beers and you're just kind of like, sure, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so here's my question. Is the dog a Basenji? Yes, it is a Basenji. I thought so, but I couldn't see the tail. Uh, it's like curly tail. Little, yeah, it's curly really cute. Tail with a little bit longer hair on it. Yes, yes, and when she sleeps, it's super cute because when she sleeps, it relaxes, but it's still kind of curls, so it's like this. <laughs> nice. Uh, I bet she's got a very smooth coat. Yes, it's actually so. It's kind of like, they're kind of like cats, because they're so just unbothered. Mm-hmm. I mean, but we left the house yesterday for one hour, and she destroyed the couch. Like, completely oh, ripped the no. whole couch. <laughs> look at her face. Like, she does not regret anything. You're just like a cat. <laughs> She's like, you had it coming. You shouldn't have left. You knew better. <laughs> That's funny. Oh. Yeah. Dogs and... How many, I, how many times have you been bitten by dogs, David? Uh, ch- uh, three times. That's it, three? Yeah. Oh, really? A... Well, my, yeah, I mean, my dogs don't bite me, so. I think I've been bitten by way more dogs than that. Yeah. I've never been bitten by a dog. Really? Never? No, only like jokingly, you know, where they lightly like, you know, chew on you, but never like actually bitten. <laughs> Even though we have so many stray dogs in Ukraine that can be aggressive. Yeah. I, I, I've I been bitten by an Akita and two masks. Akita? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Akita looks so calm. I don't know if I just like have a knack for getting bitten by dogs or something. <laughs> they just don't like you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, my the the only time I've gotten bitten is uh you know I, I just I tend to spend a lot of time around uh, aggressive yeah. dogs. But you usually know, I, I got trainers. I got bit the other day also by the by uh, the hose. I was over at my brother's house and like uh um bit by the hose. I, I, was, I was just like rinsing off some stuff with the hose. Yeah, because yeah. a dog like goes and tries to bite the water of the hose and then nice. accidentally bites you. Um and I was like, ah, like it, it bit me, you know, it like fucking broke skin and like left and mark. And, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, and stuff. Yeah. Oh. That's like happened to me. Like, you know, I, I've never, you know, uh, I mean, we had dogs when I was younger and a kid, but I probably haven't had a dog myself since I was like, I don't know, gosh, like 12 or something. <laughs> See, my thing is usually dogs don't just come on my property because of my dogs. So, oh yeah, usually, just like I'm other people's dogs. I've been yeah. bit by like other people's dogs. Yeah, that's that's what I've been bit by. Like, <clears throat> like the Neo was a, a Neapolitan that I was trying to breed, and he bit me. But I mean, he was like 150 pounds and massive and powerful. So I didn't, I didn't get enough. <laughs> no, don't him, don't look at the last comment. Don't look at it. He just insta one, and. uh the um, uh, the Akita, uh, a friend of mine was a dog uh, groomer, and he had several dogs that he kept at his place, and he forgot one of them because uh, he was like in a rush. And I went out and fed her, and she bit me. But you know, yeah. Usually, I was just bit by hamsters, like to to blood, like really. Have they been genetically like, engineered rage hamsters, like that paper. No, just like hamsters are crackheads. They're like dangerous to society, <laughs> in my opinion. Wait, hamsters? Wait, hamsters? Had like a, my yes. sister was like a escape hamster. Like it was, it was thing was capable of magic. Like you know how they have the little like clear plastic hamster cage things, and they have like the little 
climby tubes. Yeah. Wait, isn't it? Is climby tube. And if the climby tube was detached from the top, like it would just like be on top. Like you could get out the hole somehow, even though it couldn't scale the walls. I'm convinced hamsters are capable of short range teleport. They're just Great crackheads. Deal. I just found like, a hamster on the street and I call I named her Crisper. Uh, she <laughs> passed away. But like I with the fat ass, this like big ass hamster just on the street like in the bush so i took her so i'm trying to carry her to my house and why, she why like would you take the hamster well because we have a lot of stray dogs and stray cats and they would gonna they would eat her and it probably escaped you know because it was like a suburban area um, yeah. so i took her and when i was carrying her she like climbed on to my uh shoulder and she just jumped from the height of like my shoulder oh, no. <laughs> And I thought she's gonna. And she fell on like asphalt, but she didn't die. But she, every time she had like a double story, two story cage, and instead of using the ladder, she would just jump on her face down. And I think oh, no. that was probably the cause. And she Dave bit and I were so talking hard. about this though. It's weird because like gravity is the same for every animal. So even if your like body, even if falling like three feet is like five, ten times your body height or length you're still going to feel the effects the same as if you were a human, right? Because yeah. the acceleration due to gravity is constant, right? So it's interesting, right? Like the, the whole idea, if you drop like a feather and a bowling ball, they're going to fall at the same rate. Um, it's, uh, it, it's weird because it, it doesn't make sense. You're like, well, if this fly or this like little gnat falls off, you know, five feet, that's like 500 feet to it or five, a thousand feet to it but it's really not yeah. um but yeah it doesn't make sense it like it doesn't work with your brain you're just like no it should get injured like yeah like, i've seen some squirrels fall out of trees and hit the uh -huh. ground hard like <laughs> and be yeah. like twitching and knocked out and you're like oh that squirrel just died and then hop up and run away oh no hey Phoenix. all right kids falling kids are also like when I was babysitting, like my nephews, my nieces, they kind of like hit their head so hard. Like I was like, I almost heard like the bones cracking. And I'm just like, they just laugh it off. And just like, they just try to die every time, but they're like almost indestructible. Oh, I think, I think that's, uh, yeah. I yeah. Think the Odin accepts, somebody keeps asking, the Odin accepts crypto payments. Just go on our website, order, select crypto, send it to our Bitcoin or Ether address or whatever. Um, but cryptocurrency is pretty worthless right now, so you know. Good luck. Yeah, yeah, it keeps going this way. It'll be like one Bitcoin for a jellyfish kid. <laughs> one Bitcoin, twenty five dollars. All right. Oh, I love the Bitcoin maxis though. I still see posting online. They're like, "You all are dumb for selling your Bitcoin. It's going to be worth a million dollars per Bitcoin one day." And <laughs> What's a Bitcoin maxi? Somebody who just thinks Bitcoin is, you know, always going to be the epitome of okay. currency in like, society. Like maximizer? Sure. It's just like a... I, I wasn't sure if it was maxi pad or what. The yeah, I know. I was, uh, that was my Bitcoin first association with the pad. pad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, just maxi pad. That's like, <laughs> comes to mind. Oh, you're all are weird. I don't know. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm super confused. Because like, I just, I'm familiar with like crypto bros, but not crypto maxi pads. <laughs> I don't know that Neither am I, because it's not a thing. <laughs> <laughs> it should be a thing. It would be much funnier that way. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if we're going to talk about crypto. Mm. No, yeah, we're it's, it's like I, a dead, dead conversation. Dead, no. There's yeah. like the people who think it's like, who's this flat monkey person? Can we ban them? They keep saying, check my link. I don't even know. Like, they didn't even, haven't even sent a link, or I haven't I seen think, it. All right, this is your last chance, flat monkey. Flat monkey, you need to your link again. Yeah, prove you're get that you're a human. Yeah. Well, no, I think yeah, Flack Monkey was one of the people that you you posted the the comment from earlier. That does that mean they're human or not? I have no idea, but they at least said something interesting. <laughs> I haven't seen the link at all. 
I'm just laughing at my own joke about crypto maxi pads. It's so I'm so hilarious. I can assume you're just <laughs> laughing at my own joke. <laughs> Get bitten by a isn't sure. Yeah, that's because links are blocked on purpose. Uh, no, yeah. no, no. What's up with links? Oh, no, somebody else is trolling now. I think they're just trolling. Yeah, I don't think they're actually. Stop it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think any of our chats allow the posting of links. It won't show up. So everybody's doing it. Y'all are like, you know, teenagers in a class. Uh, I think I'm a Russian bot. No. I mean I No, guess but I have your be... IP and my Himars set to your location. Yeah. I guess that means anyway. people that would find our conversations interesting are not the kind of people who are just do what they're told. <laughs> <laughs> any any questions anybody have any questions any questions link sharing is caring no it's not no i think that's you know uh, link sharing is like un unasked link is like an unasked advice no one cares about it reunion island that sounds like a reality show where you have to meet with your ex or something <laughs> All the spiders at the spam box. Oh, God. Seriously, what are our thoughts on bestiality? All right. You're getting banned. What? Sorry. What is that bestiality, though? My English is not perfect. Uh, Having stupid. sex with animals. Oh. <laughs> mm. Blocked. Yeah. This is horrible. Try reloading the page. I guess because oh, you blocked. No. What happened? Oh. Reload, reload, reload. I'm not reloading. Okay. Why aren't scientists oh. using interference for corona treatment? I don't even. Oh, coronavirus? I'm using interferons for corona treatment? They don't, Stop. Don't need Because they're easier and more effective ways to treat coronavirus? I don't know. Is there a reason that you think they should? Will the Odin have kits for genetic engineering on plants? I think everybody asked that um, like every time we do anything. Uh, plants, no, we probably don't plan to have any plants kits anytime soon because plants are really difficult to genetically modify. So we do uh, have some plant media and chemicals and hormones and stuff available. Yeah, so you can like go after it. Um, yeah, if you want to try it yourself, but yeah, um, it's just, yeah, it's, it's hard to make it um, like something that's accessible and easy for people. There are certain things, you know, like people always ask us, we had a bioengineering 102 class. People always ask us if we're going to resell it. And the hard thing is, it's like, it's, it's hard for people to do... Um, there's certain things that are just like technically difficult um and there's generally no reason to make it more accessible or easy you know sure plants plant the thing about plants is it's not like there's a technical issue um <laughs> but uh it's um it's just like a time scale and like a uh like contamination issue right because you just have to like grow stuff on petri plates for months at a time and like it, it can't get contaminated so it's not like there's an easier way or any groundbreaking thing we can do to where it's like now making plants genetically modified is easier and faster no it's just like it's always going to be complicated and difficult because the way plants grow they just take long to grow yeah, yeah as for the tooth biohacking i think there was something came out with some blood pressure drug or Alzheimer's drug or some something that was making T3 grow. I don't know anything about it, though, other than that. That's something actually useful, I guess. Yeah. Te teeth are so stupid. <laughs> like, they why are. am I they're 20? Hard. I'm 22 years old, and they're, like, already, like, I need to go to a doctor, like, two times a year for them to drill out them completely and like fill them and then do that again and again yeah and I brush my teeth terrible. i floss i do like everything like what the heck 
Yeah, teeth are terrible. They should just have like you know a solid bone thing. Like, why do we have? <laughs> then if there's a problem, you can't just pop one out. You got to do the whole thing. Oh yeah, I get my uh, my tooth. Was Wait, why would you have to pop the whole room? thing out? If it like cracked or something? Yeah, I mean like at least if it's modular, you can like replace one bad unit. Like magnetic, you can just like, Wait, like a like, denture. I mean, just... sure, modern times. Yeah, but like, I mean, humans didn't evolve to replace their teeth. I mean, that's why we have the extra ones that come in later. Like, Dara, you probably don't even have all your teeth yet. I do. You have your wisdom teeth? Yeah. Oh, no, but I'm I mean, like, how many teeth wise. come in, right? Like, yeah, you're, are, you're really arguing that, like, having individual teeth would be way better than just having, like, one solid bone thing. I think so, yeah. Yeah. But like, what if you do crack the whole like? So it, yeah, exactly. Wait, you crack one too if you're down a two. It's you better to. It is actually, I think, better to like a piece. Of, uh, what do you mean? If you crack a part, it's not really going to do anything, right? It's like you're. You, you, we break bones all the time. I don't. Do you? I have. No, I mean human beings. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you go to the emergency room right now in any given place. Oh, like, sure, yeah. There's definitely lots of people broken bones, bones, and like normally they heal fine just on their own. Right? Yeah, yeah that's like true. But they yeah, but they're outside teeth, bones. Yeah, but teeth never heal. I don't know. Do we have any outside bones? Teeth, outside, outside bones. <laughs> Ew! Are why did you say that? Bones, it's so disgusting. They? I can't now take my <laughs> teeth seriously because of that. Ugh! I'm gonna have nightmares. Why you can look up on the internet. There's a whole jingle about outside bones. It's hilarious. It's like, have you seen the pictures of like? Uh, skulls of uh, kids because they have like two sets of teeth so like their a skull has like few sets of teeth because they still have their like yeah. little teeth so it, it looks like they have like little you know holes and it's like people who have trypophobia don't google that yeah I tell you yeah it's also weird how random stuff is like I've never had a cavity what uh, is this like what? a job interview tell us about never. the useful <laughs> impactful stuff you've done or plan to do with your knowledge Wow. Yeah. Google are you me. hiring? Look at my Wikipedia page. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you hiring? Is that what you're or looking for? Just like flexing with uh, your Wikipedia page. Just, okay, <laughs> whatever. I don't have a Wikipedia page. Uh, I'm sorry. But yeah. But, uh, okay, cool, kid. Gonna <laughs> I'm going to like edit your uh, Wikipedia <laughs> page <laughs> and I'm going to write that, I don't know. Poopy I'm going to write something like stupid about it. <laughs> I'll write Josiah likes poopy farts. <laughs> the secret is first you have to write a blog post about me and to then you just that? reference. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then there's a reference. Yeah. Poopy hey, farts. Did you grow up with fluorinated water? I have no idea. I mean, it was just like did... whatever they have in Menden Hall. I don't know. I think I they have grew water? up with well water. I mean, it was it's well probably water. just well water. It's way out in the county. But it wasn't yeah. like the well we had. It was like the well that served our road and like the four roads around us. It was like one water tower. So I have no idea. Probably not. I grew up with Chernobyl water, so. Yeah. I grew up on well water and have all cavities. You know, I the thing is, if you don't go to the dentist, then you don't have any cavities. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> if they never check yeah yeah if you don't look nobody... at your teeth then you're not gonna notice the cavities yeah but i think the thing is i didn't go to a dentist for like literally 20 years and uh 20 yeah and like i i felt like my teeth were fine and um but then when i went they're like yeah you got like 30 cavities or something and i'm like what it's yeah. crazy i'm like i don't like, why do I need, if, if my mouth feels fine, why do we need to fuck with it? Yeah. And then I stopped going to the dentist again, because every time I went, like, my teeth hurt for, like, six months, and I'm just like, fuck that, you know? Yeah. I didn't go to a dentist, like, for a year, and I almost died, because, and they had to, like, here, they had to, like, uh, clean the root channel and do all that, and, like, my yeah. tooth cracked and all that, so it was horrible. Wow, yeah, I think I didn't. But you know how much it cost me in Germany to do all that? Zero. Ooh. Ich liebe Deutschland, Deutschland. <laughs> so I should just go to Germany and then get my get my uh, dental work done and then come back. Oh. So. 
uh, never mind whatever I said about uh, Germany <laughs> in the first uh, stream. Rich, you crazy <laughs> bastard. <laughs> I take it back. Yeah. I take it back. Somebody's going to have to make it to one hour and 39 minutes on the stream to like. <laughs> <laughs> Germany is amazing. The best country in the world. Don't yeah, try. no, I mean... Are they making you say that? <laughs> no. <Teratoma. laughs> here's the thing is that it's interesting. So generally, if you have like mesenchymal stem cells, there's generally like three types of cells that you can uh, differentiate them into. And it's like fat, um, bone, and muscle. Um, so you can like actually grow like little calcite like formations in culture um just by inducing it so yeah it's really weird that tumors actually grow teeth it's super crazy but it's just like one of the inherent uh, properties of stem cells that they can like differentiate into this thing yeah teratomas are some of the grossest things in the world. I, I i think i saw the pictures they had like hairs and teeth and all that Ugh. yeah it's like it's like why can't like, you just, like, like I wonder if you can take that tumor and, like, give it the nutrients and everything so it grows. And you just, like, you have, like, a farm with tumors that grow teeth. I mean, I, I won't say I haven't thought the same thing. It's like, what if you extracted a teratoma and put it in, like, liquid culture? And then just, like, see how big you could get it? I only want to be immortal if we all get swords and we have to fight it out, like, in Highlander. <laughs> Highlander was awesome. <laughs> That's it. Like it, it just ridiculous. being immortal for immortal sake, it seems really, I don't know, boring. <laughs> what am I going to have to do? You know, like work my job for the rest of my life? It's like, you're a thousand. You get to live to be a thousand, but you also have to work a minimum wage. Pay taxes. Job. Yeah. Like, fuck oh, that. Yeah. No. I don't want to be right. like, I, I'm already done with being miserable for 22 years. I don't want to be like miserable for many more years. So good. <laughs> I know. Like 10,000, unless we get swords and we get to fight it out. You spend ten thousand fifty five hundred dollars on teas. Uh, R.I.P. I think you could have fly. You could fly to Germany. You know, have an amazing five star vacation here. Fix your teeth. Go back to the states and have like five thousand dollars left. Magnetic implants. I mean, but it sounds kind of fun. You could I, just I, like I, detach I, your teeth. Yeah, I've seen things. They have them like, like when you go to the dentist and they have like a little video playing of like, they like saw your bones down and like Ugh. implant screws and then you have like a bar and you just like snap on there. It's kind of, I, I wonder if it feels very nice, you know, like, like taking off your bra after a long day or like your hair tie and just like take off your teeth and just like let the breeze. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I'm more interested. Like, if you had the metal bar underneath, like, could you still bite somebody? And like, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> like dangerous. <laughs> Introducing the thousand-year mortgage. Jesus Christ! Yikes! <laughs> That's what I think people forget about, like living forever and immortality. For it's like when everybody lives together, it doesn't like become a utopian society. Yeah, I don't know why. Like, why do people? But they, they seem to go hand in hand, like. People thinking you're going to live forever and like all of a sudden some utopian society where you get to do all these things. No, like your life, if everybody gets to live, if you get to live forever, whoever is listening to this, then everybody does. And if everybody does, then it's kind of like pointless. It's going to be just the same and just it's going to it's going to be the same. Just takes longer time to die. That's it. Yeah. I mean, it's just like nothing really just, changes. You can just earn more money to spend on shitty Amazon parcels when you're drunk that uh, try to earn the last two molecules of serotonin. Only yeah. young people don't want to be immortal. If you say so, I don't know, you know, like, like immort um, immortality sounds like hell. Maybe like ex expand the life. Yeah, whatever. But like, what is the purpose of living forever? How do you even and there's no like yeah, what wow. benefit do you get of it? That you get to like love somebody for a longer period of time? Like, I don't know. Like, why not just love them really hard right now? Yeah, I mean, they've already passed away. Bad. That sucks. I get it. 
but a lot of those things aren't preventable. You know, living forever doesn't mean that like all diseases don't exist and you can't die on accident or anything like that. Yeah. Right. If you're saying that you want to live in a world where like everybody can't die, well, that's just like a total fantasy. (laughs) Yeah, I think you also, it also kind of like adds up like the the idea of like, oh, you'll have more time to do good things. And so it's like, it somewhat depends on like how good your life has been. But it also means like statistically, if you live forever, every horrible thing that can possibly happen to a person will have happened to you. Yeah, more likely. Yeah. What's up with everyone in the comments? Like, uh, why everyone saying they would love to live longer? Like, aren't y'all we're mentally ill? Alive, just experiencing re- reality. No, no. Like, I think <laughs> reality. I think we all do. That's why we drink and I do just, drugs, and, like, fight play video every games, day. and watch TV. I don't think anybody's <laughs> out there like, "Oh, reality is so great. I'm just gonna exist." No. <laughs> no. Just try to run from reality. Like, aren't you all... Are we all trying to escape reality? Are you all mentally well? Why are you even watching this stream then? Like, it doesn't make sense. Seriously. (laughs) You should do something much better. Stay outside or something like that. (laughs) I don't want to live forever unless I can be a vampire. (laughs) That's a pretty good one. I don't know. Not if you were like a Nosferatu vampire. Nobody wants to be that. Everybody wants to be like Lestat. Nobody wants to be like. (laughs) (laughs) I could create my ideal paradise. See that? That one I disagree with because like, honestly, like nobody's created an ideal paradise at all yet. Nothing changes though. That's the thing is like, how would you create your ideal paradise? What are you going to do? Like get more money, accumulate more things? Like so is everybody else, right? So it's like, is society doesn't change or it probably changes in weirder worse ways. it doesn't change in, in good ways it's not like all of a sudden you know yeah the value like, if you could save up you know a trillion dollars over the next however long so does everybody else and so like to pay somebody to like milk a cow for you is going to cost like a hundred million dollars yeah yeah, yeah. Because, like, you, you got to have some way to motivate people to do stuff, but they already have, like, a million dollars, so they just want to sit back and do nothing, too. Yeah. Um, what do y'all want to live for? You want to be, like, a... Can you imagine, like, working your own... Work? Like, you're not going to be better, you know? Nothing in your life is going to be better. You're just going to live longer, and that's it. Yeah, because, like, everybody like, else... I also prefer the quality of like, life, not the... It gets promoted, and, like, it's yeah. not, like, all of a sudden, like, you really don't get any benefits if everybody lives forever. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's part of what people miss is they imagine that they get to live forever and the people they care about and everybody else still dies young. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like, yeah. Otherwise it, it just doesn't change anything. Yeah. I mean, we'll do something for others now if you love to do something for others. Yeah. You know? It's like, why do you need to live forever? Just do the most of what you have. You yeah, need to only, start helping you, people right now. If you're not helping people right now, you're not going to start when something changes. Yeah. The only real difference I could say would be like if you're really into technology and you want to know what cool technologies we're going to have in a thousand years. Oh, you, know, you like, just want to like stay alive and stay be like, alive, oh, it's a good thing. And then you tell yourself, yeah. Oh man, it's been a thousand years and there's still nothing cool. Damn yeah. it. It's like we still don't have real hoverboards. They all have yeah. wheels. Yeah. America still doesn't have a health system for everyone. <laughs> like, there's not space pirates. Like I'm trying to stay alive. Till oh, space pirates. If there's never space pirates, I'm gonna be so disappointed in us. Like I'll be yeah, watch too much yeah. cowboy bebop. No, we need space pirates. That's how we know we made it as a civilization. Yeah. Nothing is going to improve in your life tomorrow, so why bother staying around? I don't, I mean, are you, is that a question? Is that Yeah, I don't think that's what we meant. I think just it's important to focus on right now and not how you would live your life if you were immortal. Just try to live your life like you're already immortal. Yeah, I think that's it also is like, you know. If you're living your life and experiencing things, <laughs> gotta see the PS twenty three. Then I'm done. It's gonna be like a five <laughs> D fractal structure. I don't know from like another dimension. 
Honestly, I bet VR in another like hundred years would be amazing. <laughs> With this economy, no thanks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Can you imagine living a <laughs> thousand years, years in capital capitalism? Like, what the heck? Oh god, that'd be so terrible. You're like living in this shitty apartment. Oh no. Jeez. Uh, yeah, I think I think it. Or no, something not. worse. You can live yeah, a thousand years worse. in communism. I think I don't know what's worse. everybody's everybody's perspective on living forever also involves them being fabulously wealthy. <laughs> yeah, just being the just you know like just like handsome, perfect. wealthy, smart. Yeah. yeah. So I think if you were like healthy and fabulously wealthy now, you'd be like. This is my paradise I've been trying to create. I think people just feel like it's going to take them a long time to make that. Live a longer health span. Here's the thing is like, I, here's the problem is that like, if you want to live longer, it's not super complicated, right? There's things you can do to immediately participate in that now and like stop smoking, stop drinking, don't eat meat, no. like exercise. <laughs> like if you do those things, like, you know, according to like all studies and scientific knowledge, we know like you're going to live longer right yeah, like caloric is, restriction but dang. nobody wants to do that everybody just wants a pill that like makes them live forever you know like take an aspirin a day that'll help you live longer like shit like that you know but nobody wants yeah. like exercise or nobody wants to, like eat their vegetables ew you know yeah i tell you the biggest thing for me is like you know like you can see the the, the numbers on caloric restriction and it like works like species after species after species but it's also like it's one of those things that like immediately hurts your quality of life it's like i'm just gonna be kind of hungry and starving all the time for my whole life no nah. i'll die <laughs> yeah, no i like food too much i'll happily die younger if i get to like enjoy good food my in my life and also people forget that not only you okay you maybe think that you're a good person and that's probably true right and you're gonna live longer like way longer and your friends and family are gonna live longer but also all the criminals all the like people like mark zuckerberg and all the billionaires are gonna live longer too like do you want to live in that world yeah like yeah. i'm so glad i'm younger than like mark zuckerberg and i'll probably see him die yeah also, I mean, yeah. not not in that not, that's not what i meant i don't wish yeah, him death I, but like, like i will i will see probably the future without this these tech uh giants and stuff like that but you just have them stick forever yeah but also it's like uh like putin right like the best chance for him getting out of office is is him dying someday right yeah so yeah if, i mean that's the best chance for everything to change in the world is like people <laughs> passing away so it's just like it just you take could, that yeah. away damn like you need all really people to die on society and, and culture like, and like a dictator has the resources to like avoid getting killed by other stuff for a really long time like you and me would die in a bus accident or something but like putin would live to be like seven thousand because nothing would hurt him because he's got like wrapped in security yeah totally yeah so at least you can hope that you know someone will die and that's kind of good thing that people will die and like you know bad people will die. yeah it sucks that good people die but it's good that bad people die right yeah and not even bad people just uh, uh, you know that society changes right yeah. that like things progress dying is part of that cycle of evolution and change and things like that you can't have it without death right it just doesn't work because it's just like the people who have lasted the longest might just be the ones who continue to maintain power right and that's yeah. not the way it should be yeah yeah the difference is like this person saying you know the new evil people will pop up to take their place and that's totally true but also like uh, it's difficult to entrench yourself in a really powerful position uh in it takes time so like if you're just a new person that's born and you're going to be a dictator one day well you're not a dictator today and you're gonna have to struggle against a bunch of other dictators and probably kill each other for a while before you manage to set something up but like you know uh if, you've, if you're already established and you're just going to live for ten thousand years then I mean, there's, there's no opportunity for change instead of like, maybe the dictators will all kill each other for a while and there will be a little peaceful period. 
Yeah, I like this idea on term limits for politicians. The thing is, is like we could also just not vote for them. Yeah, <laughs> it would be interesting. What if they had an election and there were zero votes counted? <laughs> it would be like, well, I guess. I mean, nobody, nobody really wants to play anymore. Well, you can vote for yourself, so you know, like, yeah. there'd be like yeah. two. Everybody votes. But yeah, it's like <laughs> that's the problem is that like you know society is arranged in such a way that like we are our own worst enemies. It's yeah. just like, it's in everything. It's with science. You know, like we started out talking and it looks like we're almost at two hours, so we'll finish up talking. It's like scientists are their own worst enemies. You know, they don't have to publish behind paywalls, but they all still do. <laughs> like, it doesn't make any sense. They have like a Stockholm syndrome. Like every yeah. scientist know that it sucks. The current system sucks, but they just keep doing because, and when you ask them why, they just said, well, because it, it kind of works and we've been doing this. And that's just their response. Yeah, because if I don't publish behind paywalls, how will I get a job? How yeah, will I do this? And it takes risk to, to, to operate outside the system. You know? Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like nobody individually wants to take those risks. So you end up with a lot of people not willing to do anything. Yeah. So you get everybody who, you know, votes for the old white politician person who does the same old thing that they have always done because they're just like, that other person looks different, and I don't know how taking that risk. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's because, you know, Rudy says because we want to advance our careers. That's true, but, like, that's implying that the only way to advance your career in science is to do things the traditional way, which, like, is not always going to be true. And it's not true, right? You just have to convince people that it's not true. Right. And obviously that's harder. Obviously, you know what I did, you know, got my Ph.D. and then worked at NASA and left it all like that's really hard. It's been really hard to, like, find my own path and strive for things for myself and be taken seriously and all this stuff. Whereas if I would have just stayed working at some, you know, Berkeley or Stanford or someplace like that, like everybody would take me serious. It wouldn't be like an issue. And it is way harder to to break off and do stuff outside the system but like that doesn't mean it can't be done that doesn't mean you can't advance your career like obviously it's way harder but like it can be done and just need people who are willing to take those risks yeah, yeah. and you know i think that's the nice thing about like building parallel systems you know if you build a system that that people can be like okay the risk is smaller so i'll jump to here and go and go and go yeah. So what is the way forward? Is it, That's a good question. I really like that question. You know, um, it's a tough one, right? It's hard to be somebody who thinks different in society. I'm sure as David and Daria can attest to. It's really hard. It's hard to get people to take you seriously. It's hard to get, you know, it, it, it's hard. Um, but I think it's, I wouldn't want it any other way. You know, yeah. sometimes I get pissed that it's just like not easier and my life isn't more simple, but uh, I can't do anything else. You know, like I, even if I tried, it's just not who I am as a person. So just keep doing you and like things will eventually work out. You know, just keep, keep, keep that mind. Yeah. And I think, you know, some of it is also like, um, you know, there's a certain amount of like internal honesty that you want in your life. And it would be really, I think it would be more upsetting to feel like I was being disingenuous all the time. Yeah. It'd be harder to live. Yeah. Like, I think I would build up a lot of self resentment if it was like I'm just full of shit all the time. Yeah. I just, I try, I would try to build a career without getting my master's, my PhD and stuff like that, and still want to be treated, you know, as others are treated, those who have degrees. Doesn't make me stupid, doesn't make me, um, you know, sometimes people will put you above just because, you know, you don't have a degree or you're not from a prestigious university or blah, 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 you know, so many people always try to categorize, so they want you to collect as many achievements as there can be, so you can be, like, on the level, so there is already this, like, social injustice system, and what we can do is, 
well, try to learn your skills and try to apply for a job. Some, I don't know, biotech company, whatever, even though you don't have an undergrad, you know, just be like a lab assistant or something. Learn the skill of pipetting and doing stuff like that. And, you know, try to make your way up. And I feel like there is, it can be done, but people are just too afraid to do that. I feel like if you're, uh, if you're passionate enough, people will want you because they'll actually be like, oh, this person does not have a degree and they know this and they want to do this. I wonder if we have the, if, if we give them the basis, how uh, big they will become. And this is one of the ways we can disrupt the system. You can tr- you can try to infiltrate the field and uh, make it play There's with so your own rules. Nowadays, to have non-traditional careers, you know, like it's like Patreon. We all have Patreons, and you know, I write and put stuff on Substack, and you can post videos on YouTube. And there's so many ways nowadays to have non-traditional careers that yeah, you can. That's what I was say. A lot of times, it's not even necessarily about applying for a job. It's about like sometimes you can make your own job, you know, or you can like you know making your work valuable to others who then pay you for your work is like a problem you can solve you know it's like just be like use creative problem solving skills and then solve it yeah yeah it's just you know um (laughs) i'm sorry someone said that you should go back to nasa and you will make a bigger difference that way you just have a minute of laughter that person is just like, eh. trolling at this point. Uh, yeah, they're just they have no idea about anything that they just said. They have no idea what it's like to work at NASA, and the fact that they think I would make a bigger difference if I still work there than not work there. Like, again, go look at my Wikipedia page. Yeah. <laughs> like saying, <laughs> "Oh gosh." Not oh, no, naked it's, it's, HD fun right. best adult yeah. dating <laughs> okay. signs. Oh, I'm just spammed by a bot now. Lovely. <laughs> Yay, anyway. we made it. <laughs> so if we're, uh, we're time to, to wrap up. Yeah. yeah. The bots have found us. We got to run. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've been here. Sorry, uh, people who have questions and stuff like that. We're wrapping up. We we'll we've be. been streaming for like two hours, but we'll be back uh, next week same time same place probably um yeah so uh like come join us we really appreciate everybody coming and asking questions and letting letting us rant about the you know science yes. and scientists destroying science Prepare the memes and anecdotes for next time please yeah yeah more more memes send us memes <laughs> yes <laughs> Send us all your great memes. We demand we'll, we'll, memes. <laughs> we'll show them on the next stream. <laughs> so far behind on the memes. <laughs> Thanks for coming, Rudy. Thanks, everybody, for coming, Robin, and everybody else. All right. Thanks, uh, everyone. Bye. Cheers. We'll see you next week. <laughs>